Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to the build video for Befaco's Noise Plethora module. In Befaco's own words, Noise Plethora is a multi timbral noise monster in 14 HP. The module consists of three digital sound generators, followed by three analog multi-mode voltage-controlled filters. This combination makes it easy to sculpt different textures and play with them intuitively and musically. The first two channels let you choose from dozens of different algorithms and can be controlled dynamically by two CV controls. Textures, rumbles, lo-fi blips, spikes, oscillator clusters, harsh noises and much more can be chosen and modulated on the fly. The third channel has three independent outs, gritty noise to create crispy and crackling soundscapes, white noise and a filtered version of either one. In the full kit, you get everything you need to build it, including the two PCBs, the panel and all of the required hardware and electronic components. This includes the Teensy microcontroller board and the Befaco brand codec. This is an involved build, definitely only tackle this one if you've had a bit of prior experience building electronics. All right, let's build it. Keep the PCBs together for now. It'll make assembly more efficient. Start with the resistors. I like to measure one from each strip with my meter, then plug them in where they go. Once all of the resistors are in place, I proceed to solder them on from above. I can then turn the board around only once to cut the leads and touch up the soldering. The same method goes for the diodes and ferrite beads. component height, plug in the IC sockets for the main board, making sure the notch on each socket matches the one on the silk screen. Then use the panel to hold the sockets in place while you turn the board around to solder. For the second board, since there are only two sockets, I just plugged in one socket at a time securing them by pushing from below, soldering just one pin to hold it, then the rest. Next up are the ceramic capacitors. These are not polarized. Plug each one in its place and bend the leads outward from the bottom. Then turn the boards around to solder and trim the leads. Now the electrolytic capacitors. The leads on these are a bit too wide. Use a pair of pliers to straighten them out before plugging them in. These are polarized. Make sure to plug them in correctly. Then come the power regulators. Again, make sure to plug them in the right way. Follow the silk screen. Now 
Now let's install the power header. I used my snake charmer technique for the first pin, then soldered all of the other ones. Now you can go ahead and plug the ICs into their sockets. With the sockets on, it's hard to see the designators. Use the picture in the last page of the build manual as a guide. And again, make sure these are oriented correctly. The notch on each IC must match the notches on the silk screen. Now is a good time to separate the boards and break off the tabs. Let's now place and solder the pin headers on the silkscreen side of the main board. I like to solder just one pin first, making sure the header is perfectly straight. Once they're all in, I proceed to solder the rest of the pins. Now let's do the same for the socket connectors on the other board. Now let's assemble the Teensy and the codec. Without soldering, plug in the sockets, stick the headers into them, and fit the Teensy and codec boards on top. Make sure they are sitting straight and correctly oriented, and solder them onto the headers. You can solder the corner pins first to make sure nothing slips out of place, then solder the rest. Now you can turn the whole assembly around to solder the sockets to the PCB. Now gently remove the Teensy from its socket and plug in the Pogo pin header. Push the Teensy back on, making sure everything is perfectly straight, then solder on the Pogo pin header. Now secure the spacers onto the control PCB through the three holes with the silver outlines. The main body of the spacer goes on the component side and the nut on the opposite side. Now install the position switches. Make sure they are straight and flush to the PCB, then solder them on. Alright, we're almost done. Time for the panel components. Go ahead and plug in, but do not solder, the jacks, the pots, the mini switch, the red LED, the seven segment displays, and the encoder. Remove the protection from both sides of the little plastic windows and fit them onto their holes on the panel. I used a tiny bit of the included Befaco stickers to secure the windows in place. Now carefully and patiently fit the panel so each component goes through its respective hole. You may need to use tweezers or something else to help align the components for this part. Once the panel is on, tighten on the nuts. The black ones are inputs and the red ones are the outputs.
Now turn the board around, remove the TNZ and the codec, make sure the LED goes through its panel hole and the displays are flush against their windows, and proceed to solder on all of the panel components. Plug the TNZ and the codec back on, connect both boards together, fit on the knobs, and check the power header for shorts. And that's it. Plug it in and have fun. Check the website for firmware updates. Make sure you have the latest one installed. And that's it. I hope you liked this video. And check out the demo video too. See you soon and stay noisy.